The study in the current video is very different to the one before uh, for the triangle group ABC, which was the previous video. Um, we had major calendar year shifts with very little process variability. Here it's sort of the reverse, there's um, a hell of a lot of process variability, but the calendar year trend is essentially stable. So let's look at the data first of all. This is real data. It's quarterly years, I mean the sampling periods in both directions, development year and accident year are quarter years, and that's the data. Now most of you would agree that these numbers are extremely volatile. You can just look, if we look at development year 8, for instance, we go 304 to 102, yet in development year 9, we go 176 to 518. Uh, so the numbers are extremely volatile. What is a good model going to do? A, a good model will give me a succinct description of the volatility of these numbers. It's going to measure the variability in these numbers, the process variability and also the trend structure. And then we're going to use that model to project the future volatility in the numbers. If the numbers have been volatile in the past, in fact in this case extremely volatile, they're going to be extremely volatile in the future. So um, let's look at our model. Now, of course, you can tell ratios won't capture any of this volatility. Let's look at our model. I've already got a model that's designed. I'm going to run it. And let's look at some of its features. You can see, again, it's very easy for us to communicate with our clients. We provide unique uh, electronic support because we can send models to each other. We can vet somebody else's or peer review somebody else's models. We can amend models, send an alternative model. Once you have your model, you can get all the other tender displays, output, use report templates, and so on. Now, along the accident years, you can see some ups and downs, and the most recent accident periods are higher. If we remove these shifts and estimate, you can see that ups and downs in the residuals now because we've removed those level changes, so we've got high, lower with that middle year high and very high. Let's re-estimate those level changes just like that. Along the calendar years, we've assumed a zero trend. There are some ups and downs, but the average is zero, and there's no significant trend changes. But the process variability is extremely high. Do we have normal distributions? Yes. So we have data with a lot of process variability, and that explains the volatility in the numbers. And you probably know that if a normal distribution has got a large variance, when the corresponding log normal has a mean, which is much larger than the median, uh, so the mean might be, say, the 65th percentile, instead of being the 50th percentile. That's what the median is. We also know that for a log normal that is skewed, um, more observations are going to be less than the mean than larger than the mean, but any observation larger than the mean will be pretty far away from the mean. So if I now forecast making these assumptions, zero trend along the development year, uh, calendar years, actually zero trend here along the development years also, these ups and downs along the excellent years, normal distributions with high variances, you'll see that in the forecasting table, when you look at a mean, you'll see that the standard deviation is also pretty high. So the coefficient of variations are pretty high. If I now remove up to the last nine diagonals, which are nine quarter calendar years, which is two and a quarter years, so we'll do the calculations. Ten times. Let's see how the answers change. 130 plus minus 13. And then when we remove the 161 observations, because we've gone from two, if you look at the end column here on the left, we've gone from 252 observations to 91. We've removed the 161. We get <coughs> statistically about the same answer, 125. Obviously a much larger standard deviation of the reserve distribution uh, because of two, uh, two reasons. One. Uh, your, your forecasting horizon is further away, and two, you've got more parameter uncertainty. 
how well did you predict the last nine periods, nine calendar periods ago? Well, we've done a little bit of under prediction of the calendar periods, under prediction of the uh, these accident periods, and the reason for that is is when you remove all these calendar years, 95, 93 to 95, first quarter, um, you also remove the accident periods, and then your estimate of this upward movement is a bit lower. <coughs> Excuse me. But a very important issue here is that when you remove... Um, you're sitting here with 61 observations and 191 here. For each one of these cells, you predict normal distributions with very large variances. So a mean and a variance of a normal. How do we calculate the variance of, or predict the variance of these normals? We use these 61 observations. And now we want to know whether the 191 observations that do they actually come from the forecast normal distribution? Well, let's find out. <coughs> and the answer is, yeah, it's in the affirmative. So, nine calendar periods ago, you would have done just as good a job in predicting the distributions of reserves <coughs> beyond the last calendar period. You would have done a very good job in predicting the volatility in the 191 observations that you left out, and you only use 61 because the calendar year trend is essentially stable. Now, let's re-estimate the model again. Let's, um, <coughs> shall we do a simulation here? Why don't we do a simulation here also? Why don't we simulate three triangles from this model? And this model describes a lot of volatility. Let's look at a simulated triangle. Well, it also looks pretty volatile, doesn't it? These are thousands. You've got 1.1 million, 1 million, 1 million, 2 million, 1 million. Okay. Now copy that model, opt all for each one of the simulated triangles. Now let's run it on each of the simulated triangles. Let's compare. Let's remove the model displays. They all look the same anyway. So from these four residual graphs, versus fitted values, which one is the real data. Very hard to tell. The one which is the real data, we've got to look is here on the bottom right. So for the real data, we had a model with a zero trend along the calendar years, and the simulated triangles were simulated from a zero trend. So this was simulated from a zero trend, and you can see some ups and downs. This was simulated from a zero trend. You can see some ups and downs. And this was simulated from a zero trend. You can see this year is low. Okay, it must be based on the randomness. Let's forecast for each. Now, if we're lucky, uh, for the real data, for memory, I think we get something like 130 plus minus 13. Let's look at the logbooks. Let's select the real data first. Real data, real data, which is the first one. Okay, for that we get 130.8 plus minus 13. If we're lucky, for simulated data we'll get within one standard deviation, less likely within outside one within two, very unlikely outside two standard deviations, and extremely unlikely outside three. So let's see, that's one simulated, 118, 11, so that's about one standard deviation. What about this one? 139, 13 a little bit less than one standard deviation on this one, 120. Okay, a little, a little bit, uh, there. again, a little bit less than one standard deviation. Let's look at the model displays again. They look the same. So again, the same story. If I give you the four triangles, and if you like, even the modeling structure, the, the model itself, 
you cannot tell me which is the real data. There's no way you can replicate the volatility in these numbers by using ratios. In fact, because the normals have a large variance, the corresponding log normals are very skewed. So if I go into LOF and just calculate the volume weighted averages, can you see the residuals are skewed? Those that are above zero, there might be few of them, but they're much further away from zero. Those that are less than zero, are, there are more of them, but they're closer. That's the skewness. And very often, there's no predictive power. OK, so it's very little you can do with ratios and get a succinct picture of what's going on. Remember, a model is a short story about the data. You walk away and you can actually describe the features in the data. Let's look at the description of this data again. Development year trends, it does not decay by development quarter 22. Accident year changes, zero calendar year trend, a lot of process variability. It's a description of the volatility in the data. Thank you.